Hi, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show some examples of strobe positioning for super macro underwater photography. So let's check it out. In general, when I want to show a detail or color, uh, I will have one or two strobes with a diffuser straight on, as in this example here, showing this beautiful goby with the nice yellow uh, coral behind it. However, if I want to show texture or shadow or topography, I will generally use one strobe and put it at an acute angle from the side or from above. Uh, here's a picture of a blenny with straight on strobe positioning with a diffuser. And here I was going for the shadow and texture and topography and I used one strobe at, at an acute angle um, and you can see the shadow effect there. Not necessarily sure it's a better picture or not, it's just a different effect. Again, here's a goby on a beautiful coral with straight on strobe positioning, straight ahead, showing the beautiful detail of the goby. And here, it's one strobe at an acute angle, and I'm highlighting the shadows and the texture of the coral that the goby is resting on. Uh, here, I'm straight ahead again, showing the detail and color of this beautiful feather duster, super macro shot. Whereas here I'm showing a coral, a uh, super macro shot, with one strobe at an acute angle to show the, the shadows and the texture. Again, this is showing the texture in the super macro shot of the skin of a sea cucumber. Now here I'm showing the aphakic space, the edge of the crystalline lens in the lower left of your picture. I wanted to emphasize that and so I focused right on the edge of the crystalline lens and I had one strobe straight on to show that. Now you can see that patchy white fluffy material uh, in the pupillary area. That's actually corneal iridescence on the cornea. It's slightly blurred because the cornea is just in front of the end lens which I was focused on and the strobe, since I had one strobe straight on it, doesn't really show it. Now I put a strobe right above it and I shot down and now I, and I, I move my camera back slightly so I can focus right on the corneal iridescence and you'll see how the, how the corneal iridescence now is much brighter. On the lower part of the eye you see that bright detail on the iris that's because the strobe is refracting through the crystalline lens which has protruded anteriorly through the pupil and you can see that light focused on the iris but I was trying even though I have a harsh shadow I was trying to show highlight that corneal iridescence in the scorpion fish eye. Now here's a balloon fish which is, uh, which is more known for corneal iridescence and again here you can see the harsh shadow on the, in, on the lower part of the iris but I'm focused on the cornea and I have one strobe above really highlighting that beautiful, brilliant, uh, greenish-blue corneal iridescence in that balloon fish eye. Here again, I'm showing the aphakic space with the edge of the crystalline lens and the notched pupil, and I wanted to highlight that detail so I had one strobe positioned from straight on. And here in this super macro shot of the eye of a scorpion fish, I wanted to show the texture and topography as well as the color of the iris, so I have one strobe positioned at, a side, at the side and you can see some of the texture and topography of the beautiful iris detail of the scorpion fish eye. So I hope these, um, uh, these examples were helpful in showing what you can do with strobe positioning in super macro underwater photography. And please don't forget to download my outline from my website, theaquaticeye.com. It has all the technical information in here. And thanks a lot for tuning in. Goodbye.